You got to live it. <clears throat> Yo, what's the science show? I am Demega. This is the Demega Code. You are live on the air right now on the Demega Code show. I am here, Moore's Media Live, Moore's Media Studios, if y'all didn't know. It's Friday morning. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling spectacular. So we're talking about fitness, y'all. Of course. Fitness ain't the only thing we're talking about. Of course. <laughs> Especially today, yo. So, <clears throat> first off, <clears throat> my condolences. To everyone who lost their lives. My condolences. Alton Sterling. Philando Castillo. Trayvon Martin. Sandra Bland. Mike Brown. Freddie Gray. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. <clears throat> Shout out to poetess back there. I see you. I see you doing what you do. I was just having a <clears throat> conversation with poetess about if I ever had any encounters with the police. Lots of them. You know what I mean, just... I, I I don't I'm gonna tell you about <clears throat> let me tell you the the very first time this I was just telling this relating the story. The very first time <clears throat> of my encounter with a police, I was eight, eight, nine years old. I was on the porch, the porch now. And I had a cap gun. I had a little cap gun, you know, y'all probably remember the little cap guns that had the, the little red strip of tape with the little black dots in the middle when you put it in there and you pop it, pop, 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 little plastic gun. I remember that, all right? And I'm playing with the gun <clears throat> and the police roll up. <clears throat> Mind you, I'm eight years old. Put your goddamn hands in the air. Huh? You talking to me? You with the gun. Now, mind you, I just, I'm eight. I've been playing with this gun. But everybody in the neighborhood got little toy guns. You drop the goddamn gun. Wait a minute. Which one you want me to do? You want me to put my hands in the air? You want me to drop the gun? Which one you want me to do? Now, mind you, I'm eight. So my thinking ain't like you like a, an adult. If you, I, So I can imagine some of these adults. Now, the police did it to me when I was eight. He said... Drop the goddamn gun. Boom. I dropped the gun. Put your hands in the air. Put my hands back in the air. Get on your knees. Get on my knees. Put your hands behind your back. Put, mind you, I am eight years old. He runs up. His partner still got his gun on me. They put me in handcuffs, y'all. Clink, clink. Put me in handcuffs, y'all. This ain't the remix. This is serious shit. I'll say, <clears throat> what I do? Oh, well, this looks like a real gun. I said, man, it's a, it's a cap gun. Now, mind you, at this point, I'm crying and shit because they got big ass 357s. Now, back then, this is when they carry 350. There wasn't no Glocks, there wasn't no Nines. Wasn't no, it was 357 revolvers. And they was ready to blow my little ass away. The dude picks me up off the ground, handcuffed behind my back. He said, where do you live at? I said, right there. I'm crying. I'm pointing nod with my head. I'm, I live right there. He walks me over. They walk me over across the street <clears throat> to my grandmother's house. I was playing on my, my, my one of my little, my, one of my friends, the porch. Everybody's up there playing and shit. And so <clears throat> he walks me over there. Actually, he kind of just drugged me over. Like, damn, I'm thinking, damn, what the, what is this? You know what I mean? Now, mind you, before that, they would come through the, the through the neighborhood and pass out baseball cards and be friendly. Hey, and had their little dogs and shit. And hey, hey, it was real friendly. That happened. Never trusted the police again. Anyway, let me finish the story. So he walks me over to my grandmother's porch, to my grandmother's house. 
And my grandmother looks out the window and opens the door and just lets off. What the fuck? I, listen, yo, I didn't even know my grandmother could talk like this, yo. I did, I, she, she gave this dude, and the dude was breaking his neck trying to get me out the. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Fuck that. I don't want to hear that shit. Get my fucking son out. Get my grandson out them gang cuz. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, he breaking his neck. Ma'am, he was. Man, I don't give a fuck. You should have took him to jail. You don't bring him here, motherfucker. Woo, oh, man. She let him have it, yo. Now, mind you, I'm crying. So, boom, they let me out the handcuff. She say, go in the house. She's still going off on him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, this time, I didn't quit crying. I didn't wipe my tears. I'm in the behind the door like, yeah, tell that ass, grandmama. Get him, get him, get him. So, I'm thinking to myself, what did I do at eight years old to make police respond like that? Then I went to the video of Tamir Rice and it was deja vu all over again. That could have been me. I could have been a I could have been a Tamir Rice long time ago. They didn't roll up asking questions. Is this a real gun? Is this, am I a doll? Is this and that? It's a cap gun. Yo. Listen, y'all, I don't align myself with no movement or nothing like that. I support things. I support Black Lives Matter. Am I a part of the move? I, that's, I'm not, listen, everybody does what they do. I support it. I've got to support Black Lives Matter. I'm a black life. I matter. I say fat lives matter. That's why I'm trying to change those things. How do you shoot the CD man? What kind of intimate threat to society is the CD man? For one, the CD man is only just, he only, he, he's not connected with a whole bunch of people. Don't nobody buy CDs no more. It's a selected group of people who he even deal with. What threat? If you have two officers <clears throat> that has a man pinned down with his hands behind his back and decide to shoot him in the chest five and six times, for what? My thing is, what kind of coward shit is that, yo? Who does that? You got two men that bounced on someone like prey and blew his heart out of his chest because he was selling CDs. If he, they said he was, he had a gun, he was pointing a gun and this and that. Listen, what was he doing when you got there? I've seen videos, man, where they, they didn't tasered fools. They, I've seen them shoot animals with darts and take the animal and put them in the truck and release them right back out in the wilderness. Animals. After they shot him and killed him, <clears throat> I got the, the, the video, you see the video, it's plain and clear, like every other video that they say that didn't happen, not gonna happen. These type of officers shouldn't be on the police force. Or get your ass in the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can't hold down someone, you know what I mean, without killing them, work out. I understand your power is in your gun. I get it. I know. There's a lot of power in guns. I know. I've been shot. With the biggest gun, or with the second biggest gun, other than the... the uh, the 44. 357 is the biggest handgun. Period. Other than the 44 Magnum. The 357 Magnum, the 44 Magnum, the 45 Magnum, and the and it goes to the 38 Magnum. 
<clears throat> I ain't got nothing more to say about that. However, I do got something to say about this motherfucker that shot this man in front of his four-year-old daughter. You motherfucker. Who does that? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> if a police officer was about to be shot on a traffic stop, believe me when I tell you this, people. The motherfucker would have the people, the person that's finna shoot him would already have his fucking gun out and ready to blow his fucking head off as soon as he approached the vehicle. Excuse me, sir, can you roll down your... Bow, bow, bow! You don't have time to get ready to do some shit that he came to do anyway. Explain this to me. This is what happened on the porch. Motherfucker told me, put your hands up, drop the gun, put your hands behind your back, all in the same breath. Now, what would that look like? What would that look like? Put my hands up. I got the gun flaring. But he tried to point it at me. Sneaky shit like that, yo. You gonna tell me to do four things at once? As soon as I do it, you gonna pop me? Five fucking times they shot this dude. Five times. At point blank fucking range. Watched him die. I got all of it. It's, 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 it's on TV. It's everywhere. His girl or whatever, fiance, whoever she is, I send my condolences to you. The whole while she's FaceTiming this shit. I mean, uh, uh, what do you call that thing, Portis? When you go on uh, live, you go live. She, all the while she going live. Now she thinking, yo, they didn't shot my boy in the arm. They didn't shot my man in the arm. They just blew his arm off. Not realizing they just unloaded bullets into this man's body. And he was dying. The whole while, she gave the whole description of it. Hey, look, man, you she talking to the police. Listen, man, you told him to get us this. He told you he was carrying. You told him this is that and you still shot him. They pulled her out the car. Threw her phone down. You just killed the man that she loves in front of his fucking daughter. You Fucking piece of shit. My fault, y'all. Y'all might get a little something to this morning, yo. Cause that's that's this one that I, I don't I don't think I was this fired up since Trayvon Martin, yo. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell y'all that right now. I mean enough a fuck I mean gee. The little girl, you hear the little girl in the phone saying they killed my daddy. Ain't do shit. Working class citizen, never had a criminal record, never got a jaywalking ticket, good to the community, works, pay taxes. He paid y'all to kill him. In front of his daughter. I can't wait to hear this shit. I heard Sandra Bland hung herself after she made a video that says, listen, if I am, if I die in police custody, I did not kill myself. I'm going to get to the fitness shit in a minute, y'all. All right. Try to check this out, though. They said, peace. Martin Luther King was about peace. They killed him. Malcolm X said, by any means necessary, they killed him. I 
I'm going to show y'all some. <clears throat> um, the revolution will not be televised. So people say, well, shit, you talking about it. What you going to do? What you going to do, Mega? What you going to do? What you going to do? You know, what you going to do? The police is this and the police is that. What you going to do about it? What can you do about it? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do about it. I, I, I'm going to do the only thing I can do about it. I'm going to do the same thing they do. Just have your gun ready. I'd rather be judged, in 12 by, uh, judged by 12 than carried by 6. Yeah, better have your gun ready. And before I go. <clears throat> Where are all the gun right advocates? The NRA. Where y'all at for Philando? Where y'all at? Fulton, mind you. They're in Louisiana. Everybody has a gun. You don't even need a permit to carry a gun in Louisiana. You don't even need a permit. All you need to do is not be a felon. You don't even need a permit. Most states you gotta you gotta have a, a, a permit to carry. You don't even need it there. So it was no surprise that he would have a fucking gun. You surprised you have a gun? Shoot, gun. Every fucking, if you would have turned around the, the, the people that's walking in the store, the people that's driving by in cars, the people that's filming your dumb ass probably got a gun on their hip. You gonna shoot every fucking body? You comply. You follow all the rules. You get your paperwork. You tell them this. I'm carrying this. Don't do this. And they still shoot you. Any motherfucking way. Where's your goddamn tasers? Where's your tasers at? You're close enough to where you can taser somebody. You've seen tasers work. If the taser don't work, then you got to blow them the fuck away. Period, point blank. They just strong and there's some other shit going on and who probably knows and your life is in danger. Okay, I get it. But let's try that shit first. That's that shoot first and ask questions last shit. Okay, before I get on to my fitness thing, y'all, I got to say this. <clears throat> to my black men. Yeah, I'm talking to the brothers. I'm not racist. You know what I mean? I don't like some niggas. I'm going to keep it real. I'm <laughs> I don't like some niggas, white folks. Man, I, this is a bunch of people that I probably don't like. I don't really care either. You know what I mean? However, I ain't going to just blow them the fuck away because I don't like them. I mean, who does this? Black men in particular. Especially these black men that's out here. It's, it's, it's some black men that's out here that's trying to regulate and make it happen in this world. Stop putting organ donors on your license plate, on your license. I repeat, black man, stop putting organ, organ donor on your license. All right? Understand me now. Police running your place and they run and they see your thing, organ donor. That's a target. Now you're a target. Because guess what happens? They blow you the fuck away, and then they send you down to the morgue. And before, the, before they, you get there and identify the body and all this other shit, they didn't cut him all open and took out his heart and his liver and his lung and, and, and kidneys and all the shit that's marketable. And you, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know if kidneys and lungs and all this shit is missing. You're on the outside looking in. They didn't took all that shit out and it's up for sale and for grabs and all this other shit. You got people, you got rich people, rich people that have set all this shit up. Yo, I have a dying son. I need this dude to do this. Boom, boom, boom. I need, the, I need a kidney or I need a heart. I need these different organs. I'm telling you, y'all. Stop putting fucking organ donors on your license. 
If you want to donate, if you want to, if you want to donate your organs, if you pass or something like that, put it in a wheel. Put it in something that someone can see. Hey, look, if I pass, I want my organs. Da da da. Don't just put it on your license because you're a target now. You're a young black target, and then you young and healthy, and 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 you know, <laughs> man, don't get me started. I'm telling y'all what to do. They look for targets like that. And last but not least, I've been pulled over in many traffic stops. Many. What the fuck are you asking the passenger for license and registration for? Help me out on this one. Not even a fucking driver. That's going to be the first question that I ask them when they sit down in the room and with all their peers. Number one, what the fuck was you doing asking him for his license and registration and he wasn't driving? If you can get past that question, I'm all ears. That is not a fucking routine traffic stop. It was nothing routine about that. But again, it depends on what type of routine you in. Are you in a killing routine? Are you in the body parts routine? It's genocide. 123 people killed by police. Guess what's going to happen next? Donald Trump going to lose. All these politicians and police and DAs and all these people that's voting for him are going to get really pissed. Civil rest will begin. It's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be tough, y'all. I'm telling you what they're trying to do. They're trying to create martial law. Period. You create martial law. Guess what happened? Now you don't have to kill black people one at a time. You can kill them. By the thousands. Black Wall Street, Rosewood. Do I have to go on, y'all? Please don't get me started on this shit. Whew. I'm going to have to take a break. That's what I'm going to take a break. When I come back, then I'm going to start my show. Rest in peace, Alter. Rest in peace, Philando. I'll be back. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Yo, what's the science, yo? I am Jamaica. This is the Jamaica Code. You are live on the air right now. Yo, I had to get that off my chest, y'all. Because, um, I can't really hear. Okay, there we go. I had to get that off my chest, y'all. And, um, you know, y'all know what time it is. Protect yourself. Be like boxers. Protect yourself at all times. You know what I mean? Parents, teach your, teach your kids how to shoot. Hey, I got on the line right now. The infamous, the world famous, the world class, international. What do I call you? The conglomerate? The gee whiz. We got the lion man on the line. Mr. Eric O'Neill himself. What's the science, yo? How are you, Mr. O'Neill? Man, I'm fantastic, brother. How you doing, little brother? How you been, man? Uh, great seeing you at the Essence Fest, right? Yeah, man, I was out there. You know what I mean? I was at the Essence. I had to go out there and handle some things. I had a couple of meeting with uh um shout to Birdman Slim. I, I see y'all. Um, I had a few few things that was powerful things that had to go on. I checked out the Essence Fest while I was out there too. Um, yeah. yeah, it was all the way live. You know what I mean? Got a chance to hang out with you for a tick. You had your thing going on at the convention center, the Lions Man, the, the Lions Man thing. You really popping out there. What's up? Talk to, tell the people. First of all, tell the people who you are, because they don't understand who they are. They may not even understand who you, who's on the line right now, yo. They don't get it. Tell yes, them who sir. you are. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm 
Grandmaster Eric Lyman O'Neill Sr. I'm a native New Orleanian, you know. You, you've been my dog for how long? I don't even know how long. It's been some years now. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, mm -hmm. I know. I love you, man. Right on. Uh, I love your spirit, your energy, bro. But uh, just, just to let your audience know, uh, I'm a, a martial artist. I'm a seven-time USKA World Karate Champion. Uh, won the same title Chuck Norris won. Chuck Norris won a world championship four times. I won it seven. Uh, I'm also uh, in Team USA, representing our country, won two gold medals. Right. And also I'm in the International Karate Hall of Fame with um, with Bruce Lee. Wow. And I've been in martial arts for uh, well over 40 years, mm. uh, even though I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Time reverses, you know, though. Absolutely. I try, try to try to train hard and, and stay on my grind and, and make sure uh, – you know, uh, I stay on point. But the, the thing that I'm most proud about, and you already know this because mm -hmm. you was at my booth, is, is my dedication and commitment to kids. Right. I've touched over 30,000 kids that have been through my Blue Lion Karate Academy program. Awesome. 70% of my kids make straight A's, 90% make A's and B's. Wow. So even though we do martial arts, I focus on education. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the youngest president of a bank in America was one of my – Karate students, uh, one of the number one choreographers in the country, uh, chief of police. Uh, I mean, we, I have so many success stories. I'll, I'll take up too much time with your phone. Uh, it's all good. Talk about it. Hey, man, yeah. I love the accolade. I love it. Hey, listen, you, people got to know. This is the Domega Code show. You don't just, you ain't just on here unless, unless you're great. You know what I mean? Yes, great just, sir. yeah, it prevails. So you in the same league as Bruce Lee. Wow. How? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, also, I'm a publisher as well. And, and that's where you and I took that picture. Uh -huh. I got to send you that picture, man. That picture is slamming. Dude. Awesome. You can put that up on your Facebook and stuff. You know? Awesome. Send um, it. And um, that, I created a, a character to help motivate and inspire my children. Mm -hmm. uh, after I won the world title the first year, I started working on this book, uh, this comic book, graphic novel. Mm -hmm. I wrote 28 graphic novels. Mm -hmm. to be total and I just got signed by uh, a huge publishing company called Heritage Publishing so you're going to see those posters that you saw turn into graphic novels and they're going to be all over the country come you know toward the end of this year next year uh, and the graphic novel is about educating the world one child at a time and what we basically do is, uh, is, is seven uh, characters that Lion Man teach and uh, educate and these characters are from seven continents of the world of course they all different nationalities they speak different languages and etc but the whole model of uh, the lineman series is fighting for universal peace and uh and it's an awesome series man i mean the, the posters are, are fly but when you hear the story man it's, it's going to be something that's really inspiring and right now we need something like that in this day and time with all of the murders killings and all of the foolishness that's going on across the country you know yeah i just went in on that man i just went in on, on the uh on the alton thing in the um uh, castile mm -hmm. the philando castile man, it's, it's serious out here brother and here in new orleans man yesterday a little brother got hung bro we huh hear about that next hung like in slavery bro what you know Yes, yes. I'm going to shoot the picture to you so you can see it, man. It's, I mean, I was just, yesterday I was just in such somber position, man, just just going into uh, serious, serious prayer about what's happening in the country. It's, it's, it's serious, man. But we have to stand up and do something, say something. And I'm glad you're on your show voicing uh, what's happening because uh, I, I really need to be conscious of what's happening and be on point to make sure that we're able to uh, defend our kids and make sure that our our country understand how important it is for them to give us the same respect that they give everybody else. You know, because uh, we're getting tired of this, man. It's rough, man. What do you do? What do you do, Mr. O'Neill, when you comply? You do everything they asked you, told you to do, and they still shoot you. What do you do at that point? Well, you know, I mean, that's that's the point the point is is that when you 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 understand that that's the way it is <clears> and what happened in dallas began to happen you know people begin to react to 
to your action. Mm. I tell people all the time, every action dictates a positive or negative reaction. You are in control of your action, but also you are in control of your reaction. So you got to be careful of the action by which you distribute to people because you're not going to enjoy the reaction that they're eventually going to give you. Mm. So that's the time of day that we're in right now. And so we got to do that checkup from the neck up. You know how you do that. Right. You know? Yeah, let's, let's it's see. It's like before you go off. You know I know you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You give a guy a moment. Hey, bro, you sure you won't go there? Man, I'm, I'm quick to, <laughs> man. You just, you know, I'm quick. Hey, look, I'm cool. But now... I've learned to just fall back. Complete. I'm worth too right. much now. I'm worth too much. I can't right. do it like I, like I would. You know what I mean? But yeah. <clears throat> you know, if I wasn't worth so much, I'd probably be just my. But the, I think the the quality of thinking depends on the quality of life you desire. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. But and, when and you that's just definitely not, right on point. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: <clears throat> the CD guy. Olden was the CD guy. I'm not, I'm not talking about the one that got actually got killed in front of his daughter. Uh huh. Yeah, the guy over here in Baton Rouge. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. The one who got shot. He was on his knees. Like yeah. He was laid down. The guy had his knee on him, and, and then you still shoot him. You follow what I'm saying? Pin behind his back, though. That's just what I'm pin talking. Pin behind his back. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in no position of a threat whatsoever. So that eliminate an elimination of type threat that you said that you might have be in see this is why this is why i wanted to, this is why i wanted two of you on him you know th this is why i wanted to ask the seven time world champion in in, in, in martial arts this question if you have mm -hmm. two men now two big men not just little midget squirmy guys now th th right. th 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 i'm tell you now the, the guy was big too Alden was big however he was on his back with his hands pinned behind his back Right. What imminent? What what type of threat is that to where you have to shoot him in the chest five times? The answer is real simple: zero, mm. zero, mm. zero. The odds is zero. That there is no measure of threat that you can derive from. You follow what I'm saying? Right. Because even if it's a martial artist. You, you you don't really have a threat at that moment. You get my point? Mm. Even if you're an MMA fighter, right. you, you don't have a threat at that moment. You, you've you eliminated the threat when you took him, turned him, and placed him in a position of where he can't use his hands, he can't use his feet, he can't use, you know, he can't grab a weapon even if you have one. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Right. And then even if somebody have a weapon, that doesn't give you the ability to just shoot them just because you know they possibly are, they do have a weapon. That right. is not how the rules of engagement go. I've been training police officers for the last 30 something years. Mm. Okay? And so there is a process of due, due process in terms of when you pull out your gun, when you shoot your gun. And the process of a, a gunshot does not, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a total act. It can't be an accident. You know, right. four bullets, you know, five, six bullets, yeah. nine bullets. That's not no accident. No. That is somebody who hates somebody, and they want to make proof that, hey, look, I'm not going to just take you. I'm going to take you totally out. Mm. They don't even want you to be able to be a witness. Damn, that's tough, Mr. O'Dell. Man, I mean, woo. They don't even want a witness. No, no. I mean, you you think about the process there. If, mm. if that person it becomes a witness, then that, you know, it, it makes your situation a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? A dead man can't talk. Period. That's what it down to. Period. Yeah. But, but the thing so is, you can. But the thing is, you can carry guns in Louisiana, though. Correct? Absolutely. This is what I'm trying you to. There's this other guy got shot while he's sitting in his car. Tell the people, hey, look, man, I have a gun. I have the papers for my gun. And then you tell him to show me your papers. Okay. Show yeah. me your ID. And you reach for your ID and you get shot four times, sitting in a car. So what kind of danger did you feel with this man sitting in the car? With his daughter. You know with his daughter. Yeah. His four-year-old daughter there and his girlfriend is there. Even if, here's my thing, Mr. Even if he was 
I mean, even if he was going to pull his gun out and this and that, if that's what if that was the case, he would have had his gun out when you walked up to his car. Yeah, but not only that, who pulls a gun out with a four-year-old in the car? In the car. Co- that's the and main. You got a female driving. What would be the and mindset of that? And there's a point? there's an officer on both sides of the car. On both sides, yeah. What oh, are, what what type of threat? Are, what what am I? And I told you I got a gun with papers. It ain't like I'm being sneaky. Right. That's some bullshit. I, I really gotta see how this comes off, man. I'm sorry. I I, I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. See, I gotta see, what do you I say? Tell you how things are gonna come off, brother. And you know, and, and sometimes it gotta get bad before it gets, get worse. You know what I'm saying? Get better, yeah. Before it get right. You mm-hmm. follow what I'm saying? Because what we want is we want it to get right. We want to be respected as men. We want to be able to be walk down the street like everybody else. You know, I mean, this white woman. You got to see this video. I'm finding this sending to you. This white woman was at a. Uh, a very prominent university like Harvard, and they had a whole room of white people. Uh-huh. And they asked the white people in that room, they said, well, how many of you guys in this room feel that racism is still exists? Right, I and, saw and, that. And, and, I saw that. saw that? Yeah. And, and most of them didn't even raise their hand. Right. Like it didn't exist. And then, so she asked another question. She said, well, okay, well, how many of you in here would like to be Black. Uh, would like to swap places with a black person. Right. Y'all would like to be treated like a black person. Not None one person. Not anything. one of them. But they didn't believe racism don't exist. If it yeah, don't exist, why like, wouldn't you want to be treated like us? That's <laughs> you. you know what that's good. Contradiction, and it, what we call it is it, a serious state of denial. That that's what it is. It's right. Like okay, well I know it exists since me personally ain't doing it. Okay, we, we got this little kick and kick group that's doing it for us. Right. I don't have to participate. You follow what I'm saying? Right. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying what they're doing for us because what they do is that what we really want done. We want them to be in their place and we want to keep them in their place. Right. You see? But we don't want to be the ones to do it, nor do we want to be the ones to talk about it. Right. But they feel that what they're doing is beneficial to them or else they would stop it. I think they headed towards martial law. Yes. I think that's what I think that I think that's just I think what what they're trying to do is they don't try to keep everybody contained because they know that Trump is about to lose. And so therefore, oh, yeah. yeah, the people that supporting him and just die hard Trump, they're going to be really pissed. And then they're going to oh, yeah. get their guns. And then it's going to be a civil war, man, in, in certain places, man, that people don't understand that. So now that the, with the martial law, they don't, they don't, they don't have to just pop us just one at a time and pull us over. They can just pop us by the thousands. Then you yeah. know what I mean? Well, you know what they did, Oklahoma. You know what I mean? I was just, I was saying about that. I was saying about you know, that. What they did, Oklahoma. I mean, we we were more profitable, profitable than they were. The Black Wall they Street. One day, yes, right. They just one day decide, hey, look. We don't want them gaining like that. Now, everybody else can come here, the Chinese, the Asians, the Spanish, mm. everybody come here, the Jews. I mean, everybody can come here and prosper and, and, and do well. Right. And, and nobody gets jealous at any of them. Nobody right. Nobody talks about any of them or anything. But once you see too much prospering going on in our neighborhood, then it's like, okay, well, how do we go take what they have? Right. And when you think about it, everybody who came to this country got rich and got wealthy off the back of us mm. in off the, of the back of us in a real yeah. way too yeah and they still coming yeah. absolutely you know you know in martial arts you know the whole objective of, of our style is really not to hurt you know it's to heal mm. you know so mm. you've been knowing me for years you've mm. never heard me have a fight or hurt anybody or whatever right my point because i would try to be was a situation before I deal with a situation. Right. But surely when I deal with a situation, you don't hear about that either. Right. Because I handle it. You right. You know what I'm saying? Right, and right. I handle it in a way by which, hey, you ain't going to hear about it because the person who got dealt with, he don't want you to know about it. Right. That's my point? You know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. But, hey, listen. But I deal with it with such a level of class and respect. Right. So even if I got to put you down, you follow what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to educate you. And tell you, hey, look, my next option is to hit you in these three places. And if I hit you in these three places, you won't be able to come back or walk anymore. Period. You follow what I'm saying? Period. So and see, when they I don't... hit your head, you're like, you're grateful at that time. You're like, man, thank you. Because anybody else would have just took me out. 
You get my point? Period. You know, I didn't train FBI, CIA. Mm-hmm. My best friend is the chief of police. You know that, Eddie Compass. Okay. You know, we grew up together in Desire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is that what we've got to do at this moment is do that checkup from the neck up, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what we've got to do. We got to sit down. We got to talk to our boys, and we got to let them know and what's really happening. You know? Right. I like that, man. Because That's yeah, yeah, because it's you know it's a science to this, man, and you know. I mean, by just being who you are and, you know, there's just, there's just so much that's going on that can come along with it. Now, yeah. people that's listening, uh, y'all keep in mind, now, this is who I learned my martial arts from now. Seven times champion now, so you can run up on me if you want to, and then things is going to happen. <laughs> they don't get that, Mr. O'Neill. Hey, listen, tell them where they can find you at on all your social media platforms and things like that. <clears throat> okay, uh, they can go to the legendoflineman.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can find me at my, um, you know, my Facebook, mm-hmm. Eric O'Neill Senior. Mm-hmm. Um, I have about eight Facebooks. You just Google me. You there know, you go. When you Google Eric O'Neill, Google Grandmaster Eric O'Neill, Google Master Eric O'Neill. Uh, you also can go on Twitter, uh, Lion Man, L I O N M A N, the number seven seven times. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I'm all over the place. I man. love it. You know. I, I love it. Get, his name is Master Grand Master. I didn't, I didn't say Grand Master Flash. I said Grand Master <laughs> Eric O'Neill on the line, yo. This is class. This right here is a moment in time. Listen, I got to take a break. I'll be right back, all right? All right. And when you come back, I'm going to share with you some educational stuff that I'm doing with kids. Okay? Awesome. That's awesome. All right. Yo, what's the science show? I am Demega. This is the Demega Code. You are live on the air on my show. And we're talking about other stuff today, and we're talking about fitness, and we're talking about everything that goes along with it. Hey, that was almost a little rhyme right there. We got the Lion Man on the line, Eric O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill. Yes, sir. I'm here, my brother. I just saw that picture, man. That's bananas, man. You see that? Poetess, you got to see this, yo. A teenager hung like like in slavery, man. Wow. This is, this is some serious times, brother. We we have to pull our resources and we have to do some things to to, to really help what's going on across this country and, and make a difference, bro. So wow. I, w- I wanted to share with you because we hadn't talked in a while because you've been on your grind and I've been working as well. Uh-huh. Uh, I've created a lot of uh, programs. You know, because you know, I've been traveling all over the country mm-hmm. uh, since Hurricane Katrina. You know, I had 37 karate schools and uh, three toy stores before Katrina hit, and so that that put me in a really bad position. Mm-hmm. And you know, but I just get to work. You know what I mean? Right, right. No, just get to work. And um, and after I moved to Atlanta, uh, I, I decided I wanted to come back and re help rebuild New Orleans. So I right. moved back up here. And, and found out that our people was in bad shape. So I began to do in partnerships. I began to travel. My first partnership was with Disney. Uh-huh. I did a project across the country called uh, The Legend of Lion Man, uh, uh, Seven Young American Heroes. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 it broke all Disney records for, for projects on, uh, on a national level. And I caught the eye of Miss Obama team with Let's Move. I started working with them. Mm-hmm. And um, I created something called the Legend of Lion Man, One Million Kick Challenge. The first year I did a million people kicking around America. Mm-hmm. The second year we did 2.5 million. The third year we did um, uh, 10 million. And last year we did 20 million kids kicking all over America. Wow, and that's so, big. That's big. Yeah. Now let me, is that the thing? Okay, you was running Michelle Obama's campaign too, correct? Or you was involved with no. that? No, I didn't run no campaign. She didn't have a campaign. She had a project uh-huh. um, with Let's Move. Okay, right. But right, right. How I roll? Let me tell you how I roll, it, brother. I don't, I don't really work with anybody. I haven't worked for nobody since I was twenty five years old. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm fifty five now. So mm-hmm. um, my, my thing is, I create valuable partnerships. Right. You know, the, I was the first person in history to partner with Disney to have their logo to be able to use the Mickey Mouse logos across mm-hmm. the country and travel. 
and do something really great for a project that Disney had called Disney's Martial Arts Festival. Mm. And so I changed, I, I, I was very successful at that. And then I partnered with Miss Obama. I partnered with the President's Council. Mm. I partnered with the uh, President's Challenge mm-hmm. and, you know, did the program that I just shared with you about. Gotcha. And then after that, I partnered with Bill Gates mm-hmm. on a project. I became one of the first keynote speakers at his banquet for his educational program. Mm-hmm. And then I partnered with another organization that has over 50 million people involved mm-hmm. called Shape America. Mm. And um, and I became uh, very very popular in that, and uh, and then I partnered just recently with a company called Lenovo, a forty six billion dollar company, mm-hmm. uh, to do computer uh, selling computers, and we're about to get into training, etc. Right. But the most exciting thing that I've done just recently, and man, and this is really, I'm so happy about this. I just partnered with the Navy, bro. Mm. The Navy. Uh, the Navy. Mm. And, and the reason why I partnered with them is I wanted to have more African-American uh, kids in our neighborhood into STEM and STEAM. And, of course, our Navy is where our robots, our uh, drones, our computer technology is on the highest of level. Mm. So I have, I have them coming in teaching our kids firsthand at my facilities. So when I moved back to New Orleans, I didn't want to come back and just open up a karate school like I did before. Right. I did that already. I did that at 25. Right. So I wanted to come back with something more, um, have more impact and make a direct effect on our community expeditiously. Right. And so now at my school starting next month, we're going to be having a, a STEM program where we're going to be taught science, technology, engineering, mathematics, but also we're going to be working on drones, we're going to be working on robots, we're going to be working on all kind of virtual reality stuff. It's off the chain, man. So this is what we have to do to keep our kids uh, focused and, and, and have them uh, be prepared for the next generation. Right. That's right. So... <clears throat> So the Linesman Project is does it have is it is it all martial arts? Does it have to do with fitness? Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Well, the Linesman Project is not martial arts. That's mm. just Blue Line Karate Academy. Okay. Martial. So what I did was is I created Linesman Foundation to deal with the other needs, you know, because Blue Line Karate Academy deals with the physicality in terms of teaching you how to be dangerous. You know, like I said some of the best karate champions in the world. Number one karate champion in the world right now is one of my students, you know. Right. Number, one, number one choreographer in the world, uh, to me, is one of my students. His name is, you can look it up, his name is Master Lernell Stovall. He did the movie, uh, Kevin Hart movie, and Ice Cube. Okay. He did the rock song. Okay. He did the choreographer for that movie. He worked on 300. He worked on, man, so many movies. Uh-huh. You could imagine. He's got over 100 movies that he's worked on, you know. And um, he's in the Hunger Games, uh, you name it, this dude is unbelievable. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and so that's one of my students. Also, Dr. Al Gurrie, uh one of the youngest presidents of a bank in the world, uh, out in Las Vegas, one of my black belt students as well. I mean, I, I can go on, man. I take up all your show telling you about the successes. And I know you know Eddie Compass, um, the chief of police with Hurricane Katrina here. Right, right. yeah, I mean, uh-huh. I, Right. So, I mean, I can go on and on, man. Yeah. I don't want to take up all your show talking about uh, my students, but I want to talk about, you know, what we're doing to make a difference. Like, I came back to New Orleans last year. Uh-huh. And the first thing I did was to begin to start turning some of these schools around because our kids are not learning because they don't pay attention and follow directions. So I partnered with a school called Arise Academy, and, um, and 500 and something kids, wasn't paying attention to follow the directions of where they should. And by the end of the first semester of me being at that school, the kids are walking in a straight line, calling themselves kings and queens, treating each other with love, hardly no fights went on at all, where they had like hundreds of fights the year before. You know, so we really turned that school around and made a big difference. See, that's what, this, this is what I like to hear within the community and all that. So let me ask you, this, this, uh, the, the thing that you have going on with that, is it a non-profit? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's that's awesome. Now tell tell my listeners where they can donate, where they can send their money, their resources, and their funds. Because believe me, my listeners right now, I'm sure they thinking, man, how can I just just be a part of this? Because you know, this is big. Not only does it just bring uh, you know success, health, breed success and prosperity, but you know it get to it, it gets to do. Uh, what it's supposed to do with the resources. So tell the tell my listeners where they can donate to that uh, to the nonprofit of that. Well, our nonprofit is Lion Man Foundation. Mm-hmm. If they go online, it, there's a lot of ways by which you can donate. You can do it over Facebook. You can do it uh, directly to us. Our number is eight one eight two five two ninety seven zero seven. Again, eight one eight two five two ninety seven zero seven. 100% of all the proceeds that ever is donated to the Lion Man Foundation go directly toward the development and building of our children. Wow. And if you the work that we have done throughout the years, and we've done that on such low budgets, mm-hmm. and we make such a big difference. Right. And that's why I've been able to get such partnerships the way I have, because I'm, I'm an accountant, you know that, and computer programmer. So mm-hmm. I make sure that everything is audited out and that every dime that is donated to the foundation both towards the benefit of helping our kids. Wow. Do y'all hear this? Do y'all hear what's going on on this show? Don't tell me I ain't trying to make a difference, y'all. I don't want to hear it. Hey, I don't want to hear it. I'm trying to make a difference. Hey, they, listen. Where do I go, man? I mean, where do, what do I, where, where do I start with you, man? You know what I mean? There's just so many things that I want to actually ask and and... It's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot, man. Let me, let me, let me, we're going to go. <laughs> well, one of the things, and I'm going to say this and give a little commercial for Miss Obama. We, we, we're talking about a lot of other things, but our health disparity in this country is just ridiculous, man. It I mean, is. It really is. I mean, we have seven-year-old kids weighing 140 pounds. It is important that we get our kids out exercising on a daily basis, doing something. I don't care if it's just walking. And then we must be careful what we put into our body. You saw me the other day, man. You know, I'm 55 years old. I can do everything that I did when I was 25. Awesome. Everything. I mean, from playing basketball, I hit like, you know, my I hit like 57 points the other day, but my highest score is like 81. You know, you I mean? like Kobe. <laughs> oh, Shit. Curry. That's what I'm like. I oh, Curry. Curry. Curry's a beast, man. Curry. Curry got it going. You know, they got Durant over there now. Yeah, I know, man. That was a powerful move right there. Man. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would have made them come to me. But you know what? Yeah. Durant was like, you know, he wanted to be more. He wanted to be closer to Hollywood. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, he in the country. You know, Oklahoma. he in the country, man. You know, what I mean, when you think Oklahoma, you got like about four or five places you can go hang out at. You follow what I'm saying? Period. Yeah. yeah. So you know, the, I mean, he did his job there. You know, they didn't give him the tools that he needed. To uh, to get what he wanted to get, so you move on. I mean, LeBron did it. Ain't nobody can complain about LeBron. LeBron owned, but yeah, LeBron owned Cleveland. He owned the whole city. He can go but, anywhere. But before he got to Cleveland, he went to Miami. You get my point? Right. Go get his ship. You know, that's what he did. You know, they wouldn't give him no help. Is what I'm saying in Cleveland. They had him. They was weighing his body out. They didn't give him the tools that he need to win. So he said, hey, look, I'm going to go somewhere else and win. And that's what Kevin Durant is doing. And I don't understand why people are upset with Kevin Durant when LeBron did the exact same thing. I mean, come on, think about it. Uh, Dwayne Wade had already won a championship, and Dwayne Wade was already a superstar. Right. Okay? And then well, what the heck do you need LeBron for? Well, real simple, to win a championship. And that's exactly what they did. They won two of them. So Dwayne Wade, I mean, uh, uh Kevin Durant is saying the same thing. And hey, LeBron can go do it. Why can't I? Hey, I tell you what. I tell you what. Well, I'm go, doing what LeBron did. Hey, know? listen. Listen, Golden State going to be a beast this year, though. I'm going to tell yeah. you that. I'm going to tell you that. Boy, it's going to be you. You think they only lost, what, seven games last year? How many, how many games was right. it? Ten games? Something like right. that, right? Right. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they went undefeated with KD. I mean, all they got rid of was bogus. Oh, and they got rid of the Burns boy too, though. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, he wasn't—he wasn't no deal breaker. You get my point? He so, wasn't. He wasn't what? He, he's not a deal breaker. He's replaceable. Right, 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 right. So, so, so they replaced. If you have people who are interchangeable or replaceable, then you know, hey, it is what it is. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough one though. I they they gonna go. It's gonna that's who going back to the finals. Cleveland and Golden State. They going right back to the finals. Yeah, I don't, I don't see nobody could beat either one of them. They yeah. going right back to the finals. The people who made it this for like the Toronto and all that. I don't then. You know, I don't know how that that happened, but that's neither here nor there. Either way, I gotta go to another break, man. I'm a, I'll be right back. All right, my brother. X Clan. Here's that's that breaks the clock barrier. Words of old make me more than a beginner. The key opens knives in place in the town. African, a brother. Hey, yeah, what's the size, yo? I am Demega. This is the Demega Coat. You're live and you're on the air. I got Mr. Eric O'Neill on the line. Yo. What's up, little brother? Hey, check out what happened. Um, uh, This is my, you know, every every week I think of something that happened cool this week. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and and then I try to put it on the air. So I want you to this for the, my this is cool segment. I want you to think of something that happened cool this week um, with what you're doing in, in, in life, and then we going we gonna bring it to the light. But what I thought was cool <clears throat> is um, I, I want to say I want to make sure I'm, I'm saying her name right. Isa Ray, Isa Isa, maybe Isa, maybe Issa. I don't know. It's spelled I S S A. That's what I'm. That's what I'm certified as International Sports Science Association. That's my. That's my. Uh, that's my. Um, my people. Okay. But anyway, I, they pronounce it. Uh, it's pronounced it. Um, Isa Ray, R A R A E. To uh, she. Uh, she um, collected. Uh, she raised two hundred thousand dollars for Alton Sterling's uh, kids' college fund, and what. Man. In one day. Wow, that's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. So that's for, for 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 my this is cool segment, I Ray, I salute you. I salute yeah. you from the grandest of my heart. That is a power move. Mm -hmm. That is a move yeah. of dignity. That is a move of of healing, gratitude. I don't know. I, I think I, I'm not for certain. I thought I saw a clip of someone that uh, did the same thing for the other young man uh, with the the daughter who got killed in front of his daughter too. Orlando. Orlando, but I'm saying I, I don't know the, per, the the person's name that um, that actually mm -hmm. started that uh, the thing for them. However, <clears throat> I am a uh, I am eternally uh, uh, grateful for that type for the, for those type of people in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's what makes the, you know, the world go round. It's people who are committing their lives to, to the difference of our children in the future. You know what I mean? And that's what I've done. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. I walked away from a <coughs> very lucrative career. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm an accountant. I'm a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. I'm a market executive. I have a real estate license, insurance license. And, uh, and I walked into my mother's uh, bedroom one day, and I said, Ma, I said, I'm about to walk away from my career because God shared with me to go and do something. And she looked at me and she was like, well, if God wants you to do it, go for it. And so that was the bird of Blue Lion Karate Academy. So wow. Ago, I didn't. Over. And, you, and, and you didn't and look back. Never looked back, brother. Never looked back, not one single time. But then uh, in 1990, I created uh, the Lion Man Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I've touched close to over 100,000 kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a national level, uh, just speaking, I've touched over 10 million kids. Right. And, and so, you know, so th that's the commitment that I made. And, and, and you know, you know the na neighborhood I grew up in, I had no reference. I had nobody who trained me or taught me. Everything I went just off of prayer and just making sure that, you know, God guide my words and guide my my actions that I do the right thing and I treat others the way I want to be treated. Because I think that that's where the balance comes in. That when you walk your life, you know, treating others with the respect that you would want to have, and then not only right. that, if somebody get out of line, you demand your respect at that moment before right. it even gets anyway out of place. So, like, I don't even allow nobody to, to to handle me or talk to me in any kind of way. You know, I'll walk away from you. 
You follow what I'm saying? Right. You know, you're not worth my attention. So a lot of things could be dealt with and eliminated when you deal with it expeditiously. Right. You know? Like you said, check above the neck. That's 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 basically the science of it. It's how you deal with things. That's right. Because I only have two speeds. You know, my speed is that I'm the nicest guy you ever want to meet, and <laughs> my other speed is I'm the guy that you're gonna look at right before you hit that door. You know what I'm saying? So and you, you don't want to you don't want to do that. You don't want to bring me to that point. And so you know, so I tell people all the time that you treat people the way you want to be treated, and you never have to go to that other level. You know, let, let you me know. let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, because I normally ask the, my my guest this that is for whatever profession they is. If you're a basketball player, I ask you what's the what would be your uh, your team. If I, if you were a uh, uh, fitness, I would ask you who who would you want to train. As a martial artist, who would you like to work with? Who would be someone that that you would like dead or alive? Let me give you a chance. Let me give you an example. Who I would like would, would, would who I would have liked to have trained. I would have liked to train Biggie, Pac, okay. and uh-huh. um and and Hugh Hefner. Even though Hef is still here, but them is my three. With, with, with alternate as uh, with an alternate of Bill Gates. Okay. Yeah, that would be my that would be the three people that I would that I would like to have trained. What about yourself? Who would dead or alive? Who who would have been? Well, number one is Jim Kelly, and you know, and I was fortunate enough to train with him uh, to bring him here to New Orleans to one of my karate tournaments. Okay. And now we're talking about Jim. We're talking about Jim Kelly, the the karate, the martial artist, not Jim Kelly, the man, Bills, man. not the Jim Kelly, the Bills, uh, Super Bowl uh, that kept losing the Super Bowl. Jim Kelly, no, four no, years no. in a row. Jim Kelly, no. not him. Who, who goes to the Super Bowl four years in a row and lose? Four yeah. years in a row, Jim Kelly. Yeah. You yeah, lie, I oughta. <laughs> no way, no way. I I'm talking about the man who won the International Karate Championship in Long Beach, California, that launched them to the movie with Bruce Lee. That's that, man, that Jim Kelly. man with Black Belt Jones and a man that said, man, you come right out of a comic book. That, that part. Boy, Jim <laughs> Kelly, that Jim Kelly. Okay, yeah. okay. And who I else? Was very fortunate to meet him, uh-huh. and uh, and and when he passed, I did a red carpet event in California for him. You know, wow. um, the second person will be Bruce Lee. Bruce, you know? damn it, Bruce was a beast, man. Yeah, I would have yeah. loved to train Bruce. I, I, I would have to throw him in there as a fourth one because I believe that for, for one, I, this is just me. This is just me. Yeah. I believe that the top three athletes of all time. To me, some people may say it's Muhammad Ali. This is these is my top three of all time. Number one, Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Only because he's undefeated. If you go right. into anything and you never lost, you I don't care what That's it right. is. You can be putt putt golf. You you, you you hey, I'm telling you what yeah. it is. Okay, there number you know. number two, Bruce Lee. That's number two, and number three, Michael Jordan. Them is my three. Hey, other people may have yeah. the other three top picks. Those I like my, your three. That's my three. Like your three. Athletes like of all time. Three. That's a, a top three athletes of all time. If people ask me in interviews all the time, what's your top three? Number one, Floyd Mayweather. He's gonna if he if he come out of retirement and get beat, he's gonna be knocked completely off my mark, yo. I mean, yeah. completely off. Yeah. Like you you ain't even in the top ten no more. You to me. There you go. But there you go. number one, Floyd Mayweather. Number two, Bruce Lee. Number three, Michael Jordan. Top three athletes that. of all time. Who I would got you? that. Well, like I said, mine is Jim Kelly. Uh huh. Okay. You know, and you know why Jim Kelly? That that's my man. Right. Okay. Second is Bruce Lee because you know he's one of the greatest. He's he Bruce Lee. Inspired more people. And then third is Muhammad Ali, and I can really interchange that any kind of way you like. I just left and went to Louisville for his services, and I took my ten-year-old son. Uh huh. One of the best experiences I've ever had. And he has a museum, Muhammad Ali Museum there. Mm-hmm. I advise everybody to go and check that thing out, man. It is breathtaking. It is one of the most uh, beautiful museums I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've been all over the world. Muhammad so, Ali, the Muhammad Ali Museum. My, Y'all check that yes, out. Sir. Yeah. That's, that's dope. So yeah. Muhammad Ali, huh? Yes, sir. And I can put Muhammad Ali first. 
and, and I can take Jim Kelly. I mean, I can change, interchange those three in any way. It really, all it don't three matter. of them is perfect. Yeah, it doesn't no matter how. Like, it depends on the day of the week. If I'm training karate, Jim Kelly is one. Right. If I'm if I'm if I'm uh, talking about civil rights and the rights for our people, Muhammad Ali is number one. Right. If I'm talking about doing aerial kicks and doing some stuff that's outstanding, I'll be hollering Bruce Lee. So you know. So do me, do you practice Jack Kung Do? Huh? Do you? No, no, I've no. never practiced Jack Kung Do. Even though I, I I know how to do Jack Kung Do, uh -huh. it's just that. That is not who I am. Right, right. So I, I you know, I say uh, style makes fight. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, Jack Kendo the... has never been used in a competition. You follow what I'm saying? Right, right. Right. That was you the know? first. That was the first martial art. <laughs> that was the people don't know. That's the first martial arts they ever learned though was Jack Kendo because Bruce Lee was actually doing it in movies. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean, people that try to emulate those moves and things like that, before he started making the books and the things like that to show you the moves, he was actually just displaying the moves in actual, in actual movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you said, it's yeah. never, you said it, it was never used in competition, so you just don't know how effective it actually is. Right, because, you know, I mean, like Mark Blank Tyson says, everybody is look good until you get hit. Until you get you hit. <laughs> Tyson you know was, so, he meant that, he meant that too. Everybody look good. You remember when he punched Miss Green in the eye? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, as a fighter, bro, when you in the ring with me, uh -huh. and I take my foot from off of the ground, okay, from off the floor, yeah. pick it up, put it behind my head and pop you in your head yeah. before you can move? Yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, you begin to really think your 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 decision to hop in that ring with me. You right. See my point? Right, right. Uh, uh, if I look at you and then I jump up in the air, straight up in the air, uh -huh. spin around 360 degrees and hit you in the top of your head with my heel <laughs> and come down... And look at this. That's and what you, you could not even move fast enough to get the hell out the way. Oh, man. That's how Bruce used to do it, though. Bruce was a beast, yo. Got to see some of my fights, man. Hey, let me you ask know? you. Let me ask you this. What What do you think about um uh what's my man name Jet Li? He's he's a good actor. Okay, but that but but his his, his fighting style you wouldn't recommend. He, what fighting style? What tournament has he won? You, you measure a champion by his competition. Everybody can do a pop right? Everybody wait, can wait. do a Wait, wait, wait. I just got to... Wait, wait, wait. Remix, listen. I want y'all to understand what this man just said. Man. You measure a champion by his competition. Woo! Hey, man. Hey. Mr. O'Neill, that was the damn quote of the day right here on the Domega Go well, Show. That's why Bruce Lee could only get to be second on my list. He could never be first. Damn. Muhammad Ali first or Jim Kelly would be first. See, Muhammad okay. I, let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you why Muhammad Ali didn't make it on my list. Because of the effect that it had on him. See? The what? The effect that it had on his brain and the, the, the things that it did to him. That's the only hey, reason why. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me, let, me, let me explain, though. Look at George Foreman. He talked to you right now like he's never been hit in his life. Never been punched once. Right now. And this is who used to get hit in the head by Ali. George Foreman. Will you hold a conversation? I'm going to help you out on that. When you finish, I'm going to help you out on that. I already know. I think I, think I may know where you're going to go. But I'm, a, I'm just telling you. George Foreman. Complete intellectually sound man conversation with you, Muhammad Ali. Dang, Muhammad Ali. Psst. I mean, now I'm listening. I'm, I'm waiting for you now. I'm waiting well, for you. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you in two areas. Mm -hmm. in, in the area in the ring, Charles Foreman didn't get hit like Muhammad Ali got hit. Muhammad Ali did what we call a rope a dope. Rope a dope. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see? And so the other thing is that Muhammad Ali, if you knew him like I knew him, you know that the effect did not come from the ring. Huh? The effect came from something else. Like and what? We can't talk about that on your radio station. Okay. You may have a type uh, problem. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, on to the next subject. Okay. That, in other words, somebody shut Muhammad Ali up because mm -hmm. of all of the stuff that he did. Do you know how powerful Muhammad Ali is mm -hmm. to say, I'm not going to go fight in your army? You follow what I'm saying? Right. 
but they know they couldn't kill him, so they just say, hey, look, we're going to do something to you. We're going to shut you up. Mm. And there's a whole lot of people in our culture have been taken out by being shut up, mm. okay? So mm. he is not the very first person mm. who they wanted his mouth to be shut up, okay? Mm. So that had nothing to do with no boxing, my friend, okay? <laughs> so you got to look at that a little deeper. I and I know Muhammad Ali and I know his people. I know a lot of his family members. Yeah. Actually, I was with his uh, sister-in-law mm -hmm. uh, hanging out when I went up there to Louisville. So I know Muhammad Ali more intimately than you know. Right. Okay. And I'm sharing with you that will probably never be discussed, and that's all I'm gonna say. And that's you all know? I and that's all I needed to hear right there, y'all. Yo, we got an exclusive right here on the Demega Code this morning, man. I tell you, man. Listen, Mr. O'Neill, I appreciate you coming on my show, man. I hate that I got to go. I ain't lying. I hate I got to go, but it, the time went so fast. Listen, tell the people one more time where they can get with you on your social media, where they can donate, how they can be a part of you, how they can stalk you, whatever it takes to get to the uh, Iron Man. <laughs> tell them where they find you. Let me, I'm, what I'm going to do, if you, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send this to you. If you could uh, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. And post this up on your uh, Twitter, whatever you, you can do. I, awesome. I appreciate that. Awesome. I hit, all, I hit all my It's going to be a direct connection of how people can donate to our foundation. That's awesome. Is that, is That's that awesome. okay? That's awesome. That's absolutely perfect. I can, I, and you know me. I'm going to do my part. You feel me? <laughs> so. Yes. That's, the, that's the, the, the best part of having great partnerships. Am I correct? Ain't this what we was talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely, right. man. But we... You know, you got to spend more time with your brother when you come in town, man. You know, there's a lot of that I really want to share with you and do with you. So uh, when, when, you, when you get a chance, man, uh, come on down here and hang out with me for a day or so. And I can share with you some of the great things that I'm doing. Um, like I said, we have programs that we're doing throughout the city. I'm taking over schools. I've got um, STEM programs. I've got uh, all kind of health programs. We're working teaching kids about technology, drones, robots virtual reality, you know, so I came back not just to do the karate, but I came back to make our kids more holistic and be ready for the next time. You know, our website is www.thelegendoflineman.com, and then you can go to Lion Man Foundation and Blue Lion Karate Academy, uh, bluelionkarate.com. So those are the ways that you can contact me, but more importantly, you can call me directly. My number is 818-252-9707. And right now what we've got to do is buckle up and get our kids on point and get them ready for whatever's happening in the future, whether it's good or bad. Mm. We gotta be I love it. Whether it's good or bad, we got to be ready. Woo! That's deep. Listen, yo, hey, I appreciate you, O'Neal. I'll talk with you in a bit. All right, my brother. Love you, man. One appreciate love. Appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, y'all. That was Grandmaster Eric O'Neill, y'all. And he's in partner with everybody from Michelle Obama to Bill Gates. This is real serious out here, y'all. When you get it like that, believe me, you want to be a part of it. All right? Now, as for myself, I have had the grandest time this morning. Poses, I appreciate you letting me ride the journey. And uh, y'all out there, no matter what, from the best to the worst, Keep God first, all right? And always keep getting closer to your dreams. One love.